Hey guys, Chris here with the good old gamer. So it looks like Global Foundries is throwing in the towel and saying, take our seven nanometer business to TSMC. Now that's not really too big of an issue as AMD has already been working with TSMC on their seven nanometer process to work on Vega 20 and we're assuming Zen 2 as well. But this could actually lead to some issues that perhaps nobody's really thinking about just yet. That's something we're going to go ahead and look at here today. Stick around and check it out. So as recently as March 13th, 2018, Global Foundry's long road to the leading edge. So this is an update on their brand new fab in New York and what they've been working on. Obviously, what we care about is 7 nanometers. And this is what they had to say at the time. After years of false starts, EUV is nearly ready for high volume manufacturing. We're right at the tipping point and we're all in. I'm extremely confident that EUV will become part of 7 nanometers, but it's not ready today. Global Foundries plans to start 7 nanometer risk production sometime next quarter, so that would make it Q2 2018, meaning it will be in commercial production sometime in the first half of 2019. Now this is the roadmap that we were expecting, and this is what they were talking about for a long time, and everything seemed to be going on track. So what the hell actually happened here? Global Foundries put 7 nanometer program on hold indefinitely. What? Just a few months ago, we were on track. Now we're just throwing in the towel. Now, this particular article right here, links, of course, will always be in the description below. Uh, this is basically just Global Foundries putting their spin on things, saying, oh, we're just going to focus on 14 and 12 nanometer and make our current clients super happy and take advantage, blah, blah, blah. It's all just marketing speak. So they don't actually explain what the real issue is. But my guess is with the way that AMD is talking about things, it looks like our work with TSMC on their 7 nanometer node has gone very well, and we have seen excellent results from early silicon. So what I'm thinking is TSMC, we're so far ahead that their 7 nanometer node is A, working, B, uh, is probably delivering better results, and Global Foundries just will not be able to keep up with this. So AMD probably said, well, we're just going to stick with TSMC. And more than likely, they just said, well, screw it. Without you guys, it's not worth the investment. That's my thoughts. Obviously, that's unsubstantiated, but that seems to make a lot of sense. So from here on out, it looks like from Vega 20, Zen 2 uh, to Navi, this is all going to be based on TSMC's 7 nanometer process. Now, that's not a bad thing in and of itself, but when you think about it, with TSMC over here with 7 nanometers, and then if you had Global Foundries over here, there's a couple of reasons why that's much better for AMD and the market in the long run. First off, what if Zen 2 is wildly successful, takes over tons of market share? Can TSMC keep up with that production level? If they start taking 10, 20, maybe even 30% away from Intel, can they service that level of production? I find it very doubtful, considering they're the only ones that are able to produce 7 nanometer chips at this point in time. I think Samsung might be close, but they're not quite there yet. Um, but still, they're going to have a lot of demands on that process, one would assume, Want because they're going to be the only ones out there, which means that they could a charge more money because, well, where else are you going to go to do this? You have no other choice. And I mean, of course, there are going to be contracts in place to keep things good for now. But eventually, when those contracts come due and need to be re-upped, well, you know, we're going to charge 20 percent more across the board just because even if the process becomes more mature. You don't really have an option. You don't have that fallback position that they did with Global Foundries. It was actually a pretty good spot for AMD because they could pit the two fabs against each other and be like, well, you know, these guys are going to sell it to us for this price. It's just like comparison shopping for anybody else. Uh, also, what happens if TSMC, like I said, they can't handle the production? Are you just going to be selling things, you know, scarce? I mean, are we going to have... Uh, basically paper launches, people want product but can't get them. That's not going to help out AMD in the long run either because they're trying to get market share. And if you have the demand out there, 
you want to be able to service as much as that demand as possible, especially when you're the underdog. And like I said, just getting your chips into systems should be your most important priority right now. Stealing that market share, showing people that your products are good, getting them in their hands and having them use them. Not saying any of this stuff is going to happen. What I'm saying is this is potentially possible. So this could lead to inflated prices, which obviously we know AMD with Ryzen for the its entirety has been very good price to performance and that's really its selling point now if it gets on performance parity or superiority of course they can charge a premium if you have a better product you can charge more money but when it costs a lot more to manufacture these products intel could then take the place of amd and undercut their products we already know that they're coming out with eight core mainstream cpus which for people like us is going to be more than enough for the near future so that's honestly going to be a major selling point. If Intel's smart, they can actually retake a lot of market share if they sell for less. I, I know it's counterproductive, but if uh, AMD actually does have a better product, they really won't have an option there. But their 14 nanometer product would be cheaper to produce than what AMD has, or at least close enough to where they could undercut them. That's just a fear of mine. Once I heard this, I was like, I mean, it's not the end of the world. They still have the seven nanometer process available to them. And obviously contracts are already in place. Now on the GPU side of things, I think this is going to be beneficial. This means that we're guaranteed TSMC uh, Navi GPUs. Of course, the Vega 20s are already being made over there. But we can already see how much more efficient their process was at 16 nanometers as compared to Global Foundry's 14 nanometer process. We had similar size die GPU uh, in the 1060 and the RX 580, but the 1060 could clock a lot higher and consume less power. Part of that's architecture, but part of that is also manufacturing process. So that was one of the big reasons why Pascal was able to beat out Polaris on equivalent die size and performance. It's because of the fact that the process was simply better. So that should help out their next generation GPUs because it'll be NVIDIA versus AMD and they will be made at the same factory. So nobody will have process advantage there. It's just whoever makes the better product will win. So that's nice. Balancing the, the playing field is a good thing. But all right, guys, uh, I just wanted to voice out a couple of my concerns. Uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Can you see this being a bit of an issue? Do you think there might be possible price gouging when there's literally no other option for AMD at this point. And what the heck happened with uh, Global Foundries? Like I said, none of the articles I found actually mentioned the reason for that. It was just the, the BS marketing speak. Yeah, we just wanted to focus on all these other people over here and, you know, who needs seven nanometers? Um, everybody, everybody needs seven nanometers. H hate to break it to you, but that's, that's where we're going. Nobody, I mean, old tech's great. A lot of companies are still going to use that, but you still got to move forward, but that's my opinion. So if you guys have that information, please let me know down in the comment section below. If you guys like this video, please hit that like button. Please subscribe. Please share with friends. That really helps me out. And that's really all I have for today. And I will catch you guys in the next video.